In this video, uh, now we're going to start talking about properties of the cosine graph. So in the last video, we talked about properties of the sine graph. Um, and now we're just going to do the same thing, but with the cosine graph. So um, some of these properties are kind of the same, um, but most of them are a little bit different. Just a tiny little bit, though. Okay, so what we want to do first is uh, recreate the graph of the cosine function. So we talked about, uh, you know, we know what it looks like because of what we talked about in an earlier video. So we'll just recreate it here a little bit. Um, so like this over here, and then if we go out to the left, we'll kind of get something, well, we'll get the same exact shape, just uh, going out in the negative direction now. So uh, could be a little better, I guess, but we're just making a rough sketch here. We don't want to worry about getting it perfect. Oh, that could be a lot better, but anyway. Uh, it does have that basic shape here. So um, maybe we can fix this part just a little bit. No, that's not much better, but let's move on. So, uh, all right, now we want to label. So first of all, uh, this is y equals cosine of x. Okay. y equals cosine of x. And uh, let's label some points on here now. So, well, here, uh, this is where x equals 0. Uh, this right here is pi over 2. Okay, that's pi over 2. Here's a pi. This is a 3 pi over 2. Okay, this right here is a 2 pi. Okay. Um, how about over here? This will be uh, negative pi over 2. This here is negative pi. Uh, negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, so we see that this graph is not really to scale. Um, pretty bad, actually, but I don't know. It could be a little worse. Uh, and then negative 2 pi. Okay. So what about the important y value? So uh, negative 1 down here, positive 1 up here. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, the graph of our cosine function. And again, we talked about how to get this, how to establish this in a separate video. Um, so now we just want to talk about some of the properties. So uh, we'll pretty much do it the same way we did the sine properties. So here, for the cosine properties, uh, let's talk about domain and range. So the domain, remember domain is the set of all the possible input values. So if we talk about the cosine of x, what are all the possible values of x? Well, if we look at the graph here, we see um, we can go infinitely far to the right and infinitely far to the left, um, and we'll always have some piece of the graph there. There's no breaks, no holes, no jumps, no gaps, no vertical asymptotes, nothing crazy like that. Um, so basically, uh, any value of x that we shove into here, uh, we're going to get a y value back. Okay, so um, you can take the cosine of anything you want, is another way of saying that. So the domain is uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. And again, this is interval notation here. So if you want to brush up on that, um, check out the interval notation videos uh, here. So anyway, um, this just means all real numbers. So any real number that you can think of, you just toss it into the cosine function, you'll get a value of y back. Okay, so that's the domain. So we could say this, or we can just say all real numbers out in words. Um, how about the range? So remember, range is uh, usually a little more difficult to establish than the domain, uh, but in this case, it's not too bad. It's actually uh, going to be the same as it was with the sine function, but if we look, what's the smallest? Uh, so, well, first of all, the range, uh, just like domain is the set of all the input values, uh, the range is the set of all the output values. So domain is uh, x-coordinates, and range, that's the y-coordinates. So what are all the possible y-coordinates, or what are all the y-coordinates that we have here? Uh, what are all the output values? Well, what we can do is look at the smallest one and the largest one and see if we get everything in between. Okay, so we see the smallest one is negative 1. Uh, so nothing below that. And the largest one is positive 1, so nothing above that. And do we get everything in between? Yeah, we do, right? So any y value that you pick in between here, you can find a corresponding point on the graph. So let's say, oh, I want to find, I want to see if this y value is in the range. Well, what I can do is say, okay, if I go this way, oh, look, here's a corresponding point on the graph, okay? I don't know what that x value is, but I don't care. All I care about is that this y value has a corresponding point on the graph. Okay, what that means is that there is some value of x that gives me this y value. Okay? Likewise, I can pick a value of y down here, okay, and I can go well, to the right again, or I can go to the left. Just like up here, I could have gone to the right or to the left. Okay? But the point is, um, for any, for any, any, any value of y that you pick in between negative 1 and 1, you can find a corresponding point on the graph, okay? just by going out to the right or to the left. So what that means is that you get negative 1, you get 1, and you get everything in between. So the range is from negative 1 to 1, 
square brackets because we include both negative 1 and 1. Okay, so remember, never use square brackets on the infinities. Always round a parentheses on those, no matter what. But anyway, the range is negative 1, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 1, and an interval notation that's uh, expressed like this here. Okay, so that's domain and range. Um, just like the sine function, uh, this guy here is 2 pi periodic. Okay, 2 pi, 2 pi periodic. So what does that mean? That just means that uh, this function, uh, after 2 pi units, so if you start at any x value, go 2 pi units to the right or to the left, um, everything's going to start repeating. Okay, so we talked a lot about this property here, and we've used it to evaluate some, uh, you know, uh, trig functions at certain values of x, things like that. So, um, but what does that mean in terms of the graph? Well, it means if you start at any x value, go to the right 2 pi units, um, or to the left 2 pi units, you'll have the exact same y-coordinate. Okay, so if we start at negative pi over 2, go 2 pi units to the right, we're going to have the exact same y-coordinate at both of these points here. Okay? So negative pi over 2, the y-coordinate is 0. Go 2 pi units to the right, y-coordinate is 0. Okay? Likewise, if we start over here, okay, let's maybe use a different color. Uh, if we start over here, okay, I don't know what x value that is, but I don't really care. All I know is that if I go 2 pi units to the right, okay, which will put me over here, 2 pi units to the right, then I'm going to have the same y-coordinate. Okay? Same y-coordinate there. How do I know that's 2 pi units to the right if I don't even know what the x-coordinate is? Well, I know negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. I know that's 2 pi. Okay, so if I take negative pi over 2 and if I add 2 pi, um, if I get a common denominator, that's negative pi over 2 plus uh, 4 pi over 2. Okay, so just multiply this by 2 over 2. That'll give me a common denominator. So negative pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2, that's 3 pi over 2. Okay, so I know that... Uh, if I'm at negative pi over 2, I can go 2 pi units to the right and be over here. So then I just follow up along uh, the same distance on the cosine graph here. Okay, so if I just go up here, go up here the same distance, then I'm 2 pi units apart still. Okay, because I just travel the same distance, so the distance between these guys stay the same. Anyway, just some tiny little subtle details there that we don't really want to worry about too much. Um, but the point is, uh, we talked about this periodic property before, and what it means in terms of the graph is if you start at any point on the graph, go 2 pi units to the right or to the left, you'll have a different x-coordinate, of course, but the y-coordinate will be exactly the same. Okay. So that's all that means here. Um, okay, so what else should we talk about? Uh, let's talk about the intercepts. So x-intercepts. So remember, in general, um, an x-intercept is a point where you're on the x-axis. Okay, so what are the values of x that put us on the x-axis? Well, uh, negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Okay, and if we kept going, uh, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, 11 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, likewise, if we kept going in the negative direction, uh, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, negative 7 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. So we uh, have that. So this is x equals, we can say, dot, 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 comma, uh, negative 3 pi over 2, um, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, uh, positive 3 pi over 2, comma, dot, 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 okay? And just like with the sine function, uh, there was a shorter way of expressing this sort of thing. So notice these are different values than the sine function, right? Um, but the shorter way of expressing this, um, a little more complicated than it was for sine, but anyway, what we could say is uh, x equals um, 2k plus 1 in parentheses times pi over 2, where uh, k is any integer. k, any integer. Okay, so remember for the sine function, it was just x equals k pi, right? For the sine function, it was just that, integer multiples of pi. Okay, so what is this? Uh, this looks a little more complicated, but it's actually not that bad. Um, Let's look, uh, think of it like this. Let's express it in words first, then we'll talk about how to get these values. Um, so if k is any integer, what's 2k? Well, if you take in any integer, uh, multiply by 2, what do you have? You have an even integer, okay? So take anything, take any integer, multiply by 2, you have an even integer. So for example, uh, 10 times 2 is 20, that's an even integer. Uh, 13 times 2 is 26, that's an even integer. Okay, so take any integer, multiply by 2, you have something even. What if you take an even integer and add 1? 
then you have an odd integer, okay? So uh, if k is 10, then 10 times 2 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21, that's an odd integer. If k is 13, 13 times 2 is 26, which is even, then you add 1 and you get 27, that's odd. Okay. So in other words, uh, no matter what k is, 2k plus 1 is always odd. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're taking odd integer multiples of pi over 2. Okay, so that's, that's worth writing out in words, I guess. So this is a odd integer multiples of pi over 2. Okay, because what we're doing is uh, k is any integer, so 2k plus 1 is just an arbitrary odd integer. So odd integer multiplied by pi over 2. Odd integer multiples of pi over 2. Okay, so what is that? How does that relate to this? Well, this here is negative 3 times pi over 2. This is negative 1 times pi over 2. This is positive 1 times pi over 2. Positive 3 times pi over 2. The next one would be positive 5 times pi over 2. Positive 7 times pi over 2. Positive 9 times pi over 2, and so on and so forth. Likewise, if we go this way, uh, negative 5 times pi over 2. Negative 7 times pi over 2. So the pattern just keeps going on. We just take odd integers. Uh, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, negative 5, negative 7, and so on. Multiply them by pi over 2, that gives us the x-intercepts. Okay. So uh, let's erase this to make room. So that's what's going on there. Um, and again, x equals 2k plus 1, that quantity times pi over 2, where k is any integer. So again, odd integer multiples of pi over 2. Okay. So um, just some little details there. How about the y-intercept? So again, in general, y-intercepts are usually easier because there's going to be at most one of them. So we have either 0 or 1. So just like an x-intercept is a value of x where we're on the x-axis, um, a y-intercept is a value of y where we're on the y-axis. So y-intercepts, uh, what's the y-value on the y-axis? Well, uh, here, y equals 1. Okay, so we just look at the graph and see right away, okay, y equals 1 when we're on the y-axis, so that's uh, our y-intercept. Okay. So that was uh, quite a bit simpler than x-intercept, right? So that's it for the y-intercept. Um, now, just like with the sine graph, we can talk about uh, maxes and mins, so let's go ahead and do that. So what is the max value? So the maximum value, we kind of already briefly mentioned it when we did the range. Um, <clears throat> the maximum value is what? Well, again, let's go look at the graph. What's the largest possible y value we can have here? It's 1. Okay, the largest y value is 1. Okay, so we get nothing above that. So 1 is the max value. Uh, so it is y equals 1. And where does it happen? It happens at uh, x equals what? Uh, it happens at x equals negative 2 pi, 0, uh, positive 2 pi. We keep going, it's going to happen at 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, and so on and so forth. So um, it happens that x equals, let's say, dot, 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 comma, negative 2 pi, <clears throat> 0, uh, 2 pi, dot, dot, dot. So what's the pattern that's happening here? Negative 2 times pi, 0, uh, then 2 pi. So the next one would be 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. So notice it's all the even integers multiplied by pi. Okay, so uh, a shorter way of saying this actually would be x equals x equals 2k pi, where k is uh, any integer. And k is any integer. Okay. <clears throat> so if we want to say that in words, so let's, uh, maybe this is kind of hard to read, but let's zoom in on that. So x equals uh, 2k pi, where k is any integer. So if k is 1, then we have 2 times 1 times pi, which is 2 pi k is 0, 2 times 0 times pi is 0. <clears throat> k is negative 1, uh, 2 times negative 1 times pi is negative 2 pi. If k is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times pi is 4 pi. So that would be the next one here, which is not really uh, labeled on the graph. But if this pattern keeps repeating, so we also know this from the 2 pi periodic property. Okay? If uh, x equals 2 pi, uh, if y equals 1 there, um, then if we go 2 pi units to the right, we'll be at 4 pi, right? And we'll have the same y-coordinate, so we know that from the 2 pi periodic property. Okay? So um, the maximum value is y equals 1, and it happens at all these values of x. Okay? So again, uh, that's not really uh, 
critical. Uh, it's not really as important as the intercepts and the domain and range anyway, but it's worth pointing out. Um, how about the minimum value? So let's zoom back out a bit. So the minimum value is, uh, the minimum value is y equals negative 1, right? We talked about that when we did the range, and we can see from the graph uh, the smallest value of y that we could possibly have on the graph is negative 1. Okay, so we see that here. Okay, y equals negative 1. And where does it happen? Uh, it happens at x equals what? So let's go ahead and take a peek up here. So when is y equal to negative 1? Well, here, negative pi, when x is negative pi, uh, when x is positive pi. Um, that's not really that illuminating, but if remember the 2 pi periodic property. So negative pi, add 2 pi, you get pi. Add 2 more pi, you get 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, 9 pi, and so on and so forth. So at x equals uh, dot, 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 comma, negative pi, uh, positive pi, 3 pi, comma, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So what if we want to express that in a more concise way? So up here, um, for this even integer multiples of pi, 2k pi. What if we want odd integer multiples of pi? Well, we already know how to do odd integer multiples, right? We talked about it up here. Remember, this is odd integer multiples of pi over 2. What we want here is odd integer multiples of pi. So um, let's erase this, because we're kind of out of room here. So here, this is odd integer multiples of pi over 2. What we want here is odd integer multiples of pi. Negative 1 times pi, positive 1 times pi, 3 times pi, 5 times pi, 7 times pi. 9 times pi, and so on and so forth, we go this way. Negative 1 times pi, negative 3 times pi would be the next over this way. Then negative 5 times pi, negative 7 times pi, and so on and so forth. So um, odd integer multiples of pi, so that's 2k plus 1. K, that always gives us an odd integer, and we're, now we're multiplying it by pi. Okay, and we do want to be clear that uh, k is any integer. So k, any integer. Okay, so kind of out of room to write it here, but anyway, that's what's going on here. Um, 2k plus 1 times pi, so this is odd integer multiples of pi. Okay, so just some little uh, tiny details there. Okay. And again, it's, it's kind of important, the max and the min values, but they're not really as critical as the intercepts or the domain and range. Uh, those are much more important to know about. So let's get rid of this. And the last thing we want to talk about, um, just like we did in the previous video, is... Uh, even odd properties. So remember, uh, so cosine, uh, cosine is an even function. Okay, so what does it mean to be an even function? So that means that uh, cosine of negative x equals cosine of just plain old x, which is actually a pretty nice property to have. Um, to simplify things quite a bit depending on what you're doing. Okay, so cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. So we've talked about this property quite a bit before, but now that we're talking about the graphs, uh, what does this mean in terms of the graph? So remember, uh, even functions are symmetric over the y-axis. And we can see, um, if I had drawn it a little better, it would be quite a bit more clear, but it's not too bad, I guess. Uh, but this is uh, symmetric over the y-axis, right? So in other words, if you fold this guy in half over the y-axis, um, you know, fold it in half this way or that way, you're just going to get the same thing on the other side. So if we take this piece, flip it over the y-axis, we're going to get the same thing over here. So it's like a mirror image. So you can think of the y-axis as like a mirror, and we have the same thing on both sides of the y-axis. Okay, so that's all it means um, to be an even function in terms of the graph. Okay, so algebraically it means this, cosine of negative x equals cosine of just plain old x. Um, and as far as the graph goes, it just means the graph is symmetric over the y-axis. And we can see that here, right? So those are some properties of the graph of the cosine function, um, and then we'll have some examples coming up next.